Hello. Hello. So, Hello. 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 How goes it? It's pretty good. Yeah. It's tough to think of an opening bit because you, with the latency of Discord, you don't know if you're gonna like headbutt on the way in. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's I do that a lot to Will, where I'll be like, oh, I have it. My mouth could make a noise, <laughs> my and everyone would love me. Thing. You guys do it all the time. It's my or favorite somebody, thing. You have gotten worse at it. Like you, you genuinely do more of it now, now that your son, than you did. As any <laughs> the thing is, characters. If this was just a discussion, it would be one of those things where it's like, okay, I, I should yield some space and chill. But it's like, I'm the GM. When I butt, it's because <laughs> I need to talk now. Yeah. So it's I, sometimes I, being like. I like this joke. Haha. -ha. Okay. <laughs> so I almost I almost think Gabe does it on purpose sometimes. Like you'll be saying oh, no, something it's, and Gabe it's will good. Be like, oh, like yeah. it, it gets the reactions. Like there's a there's a box on the screen that has my face in it and you can see my mounting frustration and it's good for the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It makes yeah. me laugh every single time. I fucking uh, love it. I know. I always <laughs> I always look at Ken whenever it happens and he's like <laughs> <laughs> oh beans. It's, it's good. It's good shit. This might be one of the few times that there's a natural point to flow into the clipboard. Natural point to flow into the clipboard. <laughs> and you ruined it. Yep, yep, and then there it went. There it goes. Acknowledging it. Darn you and your artistic integrity having to point everything out. You can't acknowledge the bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, you can't acknowledge the bit. <laughs> it's also probably good to listen to my own advice and actually not acknowledge the bit. <laughs> Look, the floor is yours. I'm. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, after that well, scathing well, review, you, of my bud, and buddy. <laughs> you did this. You moment. did the I can't just... same thing. <laughs> With our with our fallout thing, where we're just like, okay, how about we do an intro and we change it up every time? So it's, this one's going to be blank and blank with Ken and Will, and we're gonna we're gonna improv it each and every time. And we go in, we do the first bit, and you're just like, and that's gonna be a thing from now on. And I'm just like, <laughs> uh, that's the problem with doing stuff live is that your funny bone just. Aches wrong sometimes. It oh. twangs. You you flake. You flop. The jokes yeah. don't land. That's true. The contract is won. The job is done. The, ch <laughs> the destination set. And yet, as often they do, our heroes are fated to mill about. Senator Franklin should come and find them for debrief and payment. The General Rookery Office in White Abbey needs a check-in before you leave for New for uh, Newtown. And Croak will. For the clipboard, are you using Omen Watcher? Sure. Oh, the spectrum of language. So many words for fight, no two the same. Shootouts happen across the street. A melee happens in the middle. An assault implies an honored opponent. An attack, the inverse. Friends have dust-ups. Friendly foes have tussles. And enemies have brawls. When the fight's inevitable, and it's guaranteed to end in death, and it looms like a black storm cloud, like a question that can't stay unanswered, and the roads clear, and the guards disappear, and the birds all fly away. Well, that's a showdown. Welcome to Bloodline. <laughs> So we are going to start with the crack of dawn. Who? Will, intro's going. God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. We discussed this. We discussed this one. We discuss, and we plan, and we plan. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not the one. <sighs> Is it still the same technical issue where we weren't muted, so people heard me flub going? Anyway, so it's I can't the crack of dawn you. right at the I opening of this. I can mute myself to the stream. I can't mute you guys to the stream. <laughs> that seems... 
Like, it shouldn't be a problem. Like, that seems like the sort of thing where we should be mutable. <laughs> <laughs> like I, can, I feel like that would. You I can, can go in Discord. and lower your volume. Like, look, I can do it to you right now, Will. And now you're oh. muted. But I'd have to do that for both of you, and I can't do that oh, instantaneously. Oh, oh. Oh, hold it back. Like this... hurt me. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like our stream falling apart and us talking about how it's falling apart is kind of the brand at this point. Oh yeah. Like, there's got to be a way to cure it, or it's like, okay, and we roll the intro and mute all the mic input, but. We don't have mic point, inputs. <laughs> at this point, the stream falling apart and the us talking about how the stream falling apart is our brand, is our brand. Yeah. I think our brand is me running out of jokes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Crackadon. 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 Who's awake first? <laughs> We're like, ask Crackadon, am I right? Uh, Croquil. Hey, yo. Croquil <laughs> is with a very bad omen. She's not feeling good. She's very antsy and just wants to get moving to the next town. All right, so you kind of you, you jostle, you get up. It's there, it's in your stomach, it's looming. There's nothing in the hold, so it's easy for you to get up to the hatch and kind of just go out onto the decks to stretch. You, there's kind of a bit of a magical hum. Someone else is on the deck. You reckon it's bilging? But you don't know. You just feel something magic y happening. I get up feeling great. Man, <laughs> what a great day it is today. Don't feel anything magical at all, because I have no magical ability whatsoever. Feeling great today. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, to be magically deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you you sort of just creak up a little bit later after hearing a bit of groaning. That sort of thing where you hear a noise, but you don't register that you heard a noise. And then, like, five seconds later, you go, mm -hmm. roll out of bed. Uh, where are you doing first? Where are you going first? What you doing? Check on the ship. See what everybody's doing. Get some breakfast. All right, so you sort of pace up and down the hold. Everything seems to be in order here. Nothing needs to be swept. Looks like Rooker isn't up yet. Mm -hmm. Looks like... You look over and you see that Sun's asleep and there's like, boomp, boomp, boomp. Like he's hugging a couple cannonballs. Uh, that's not really that odd for Sun. Uh, so I guess I'll go for a walk. <laughs> You're my precious. <laughs> my precious. It's it for you. You could be rounder. You could be more aerodynamic. <laughs> You're my least favorite. <laughs> I will record nice you. Though. Don't you worry about that. Oh, well, don't worry. Daddy's going to record you. The fire of the innovation. You hear the creaking of uh, Crowquill getting up onto the decks above. Bilge There's sort of the like board. a... You hear just... I... He's right at the bow of the ship. What are you doing this morning? He... Feeling... I... Feeling off? Something... Yeah, something's... Uh... Same. <laughs> I come up I the stairs, to... feeling great. <laughs> so you're like, sun shining, <laughs> It's gonna be a chilly morning, you throw your coat on, you clamber on up, you got your gear ready, you're about to walk up on the deck and you see, like, Crowquill and Bilgy both, like, s fixed at the same point in the distance. You hear them kind of just going, yep, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, I look at that point. Do I see anything? Uh, like the second story of a bookstore, maybe? Huh. Uh, I go up to them, like, hey, anything interesting? What's going on? Be on your guard. Be on my guard? It's a beautiful day, what do you need? We're leaving, we're going to a new town. Yeah, and I can't get out of here soon enough. Just, just trust me on this. Something's up. Thumbs up. Okay. 
Bilging. Oh, what's what's going on, guys? So, son, you didn't go to bed with these. Oh, oh, God! What? There's three of the cannonballs just in your bunk with you. It's a little suspicious, mm. man. <laughs> that's uh, that's not right. Uh, hmm. Uh, hold on. Are they live? Like, I guess I guess cannonballs aren't really live. I'm good. I'm <laughs> putting them back with the rest of the munitions. You get a, a cannonball's a heavy thing, so you get out of the bunk. It creaks and it like heaves as if there's still another person in there. You take out one. You go. You open the storage. You crack open the barrel. Clunk. You get the second one, and as you're there with the third one, you hear just faintly like a shuddering hiss from within. Above decks, Bilgy turns back towards you, uh, Jane, and he like reaches out with like a withery old finger. This early in the morning, like dead crack of dawn, nobody really pays attention to who's on the ships anyways. He just looks at you and goes... May your feet be swift between sheltered places. Write that down on your character sheet with a roll of with a roll of sixteen. This is just some ritual magic. Uh, if a situation comes up that seems to fit that, that's uh, 16. Okay. Sounds good. Could I do the same? Uh, you would probably have to th flavor it differently unless you're doing the exact same technique Bilgy does. With ritual magic, it's very personal how you do these I things. I have a feeling I would do a very similar technique to Bilgy. Like, it's Okay. There was there was no like hand like there was awkward pointing but like there's no hand movements or like drawings on the ground because that's not what I do so <laughs> I feel like Croquil sort of wanders up to you and like throws a feather in your face. <laughs> <laughs> and is just like and may your arrow curve around the armor of your opponent. <laughs> And just kind of like wanders back down to get breakfast. <laughs> Wonder roll for it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I could do that with ritual magic. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks, Bilgy, for teaching me ritual magic. Uh, that's a sixteen. Two sixteen. Nice. Okay. Well, instead of coming up yawning and stretching, uh, Son comes storming up the stairs going, All right! Who touched the munitions? Why would I touch the munitions? I don't know, but somebody did. I'd never sure go down there. You. I'm likely to knock something over and blow a hole in the ship. No, you're the golden child. Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, thanks, Pa. <laughs> Cannonier! You, you belt that out, and then you hear, uh, oh, shit, hold on, and you hear, like, grumbling, and then, like, it's, it's a boat, it's a wooden boat, there's not really thick walls, you hear Tiana start to stir and be like, why the... Son, what the fuck? Who touched the munitions? This is a serious matter. And then you you hear like in a big smiley through bared teeth way, Rutger start to stir and he goes, Breakfast And you hear like he's presumably in his true form down there, you hear the bed groan and he starts to clamber up. Breakfast. I want to get you hear, like, Mr. Lee, tell me. Okay. You hear like a tapping, like a thumping, 
the thumping is rhythmic, you figure that Ken and Ye is, like, pissed off enough to not want to bother with any of the crutches or anything. He quickly, he's not slow or anything, he clambers his way up and he opens the hatch and he goes, Where did you put cannonballs in my bed? Uh, I was about to ask you the same thing. I was like, who was it? And then both of you, you pivot your heads. You hear the, like, near the bow of the ship where the apparatus is, there's a groaning. Okay, and is supposed to do that. Uh, I think she's hungry. Mm-hmm. I do. I do like the the eyes watching gesture towards everybody except for Crokewell. <laughs> and I, I go back down to, I guess, put cannonballs into or oil or whatever steam into this machine. You head up and you see Tiana waiting, cannonball under each arm, just kind of slumped against the door, waiting for you to open it. Somebody's been messing. No wonder, no wonder she's grumpy. Someone was in here last night. Mess with all that shit. I I turned to Crowfell. Guess he's not watching you. No. Warbles, did you see anyone other than the crew? You don't really get anything from Warbles, which is non response is usually the yes. Or sorry, non response is would in this situation be like, no, I don't see anything. You got nothing, yeah, no. He's not looking at me, because, like, what am I going to do? I'm pretty sure people would know if I was putting cannons in their bed. It's very hard. I would probably drop one on, on Kenanye's stomach or something. <laughs> yeah, there weren't any in yours. It was just in Kenanye's, well, Kenanye and Tiana's, and then in uh, Sun's bed. Yeah. Where? Uh, I gotta go for a walk. Yeah, you hear Bilgy barking up ahead. Looks like people are starting to come out. You get up, and sure enough, he scampers on towards you, holding the leash. He sort of, like, chucks it at you. Cool. I take it, I guess. All right. Both of you head down, and you can see that there's a few people milling about up and down the docks. There's a sort of like a clanging underneath. Uh, you can hear Rooker starting to prepare breakfast as you guys are leaving. Tiana goes back to the room one more time, gets you one more cannonball. Looks like that's it. Weird. So, it's gone. What do you do? I want food. <laughs> this is both an IRL and Croquel statement. <laughs> I was gonna feel like the same. <laughs> you hear like a. It's gonna be a little while. Things are still being mixed and thrown together. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna try and like keep the the anti scry wards up. Like since since that trip, I've been like trying to keep them up as best as possible. You Hi. sort of like, oh. so you move up and down the ship, you feel the walls, they feel sturdy. The magic hasn't been disturbed. Yeah. Son? Oh, uh, I and would like to do an investigation to figure out what these cannonballs were doing. All I'm right. trying to figure out if anyone could have gotten in here, the door was locked when I got here. It was latched. Uh, looking in, you can see that like it's the number of cannonballs that was already in there. They would have made their way into your bed. It's also the sort of thing where like a few adventures back, as this thing was roaring for a fight, it like popped the top off the cannon barrel while you were loading. Like this might just be the machine being hungry. Uh, well, all right then. Ooh, Cannon yeah, get, get your thing under control. Yeah. Uh... You can hear him from the other end of the ship just like, hey, come on, if we want to do that, we got to get in the fight. 
I suppose. Well, then in that case, I am doing my routine. Just double checking that everything's battened down. Uh, making sure that there's nothing uh, amiss after all my stuff was tampered with. Uh, and I roll a 14 for my routine today. All right. You walk up and down. You're checking your bench. You're making sure all the powder's sealed. Everything's good on your end. You don't really touch Ken and Ye's side, but, you know, you're kind of, like, eyeing anything that's too close to the line. Mm -hmm. Not that there's a literal line. I don't feel like you guys would have that kind of a relationship. But No, no. It's much more that my side is cleaned up and locked tight, and I feel like his side has a lot of just doodles and papers and... You know, blueprints scattered around. Spare I feel cogs. Like, <laughs> just I feel like the there. line isn't as much we have decided it as much as where the sort of, you know, knife carved doodles and markings have mm. been carved into the desk on Kennedy's side. And I like to keep my side, you know, smooth. So basically, hour to hour, if he's working and building stuff, there's different things on this table, like 15 objects, six tools, like a pile of filings that hasn't been cleaned up, like scrapped and colored over bits of blueprint. It So, like, when the thing changes, you don't really notice, but this time, after finally putting everything back and looking over, it occurs to you that there's just some lumpy shit underneath it. Like a towel. Mm. Well, does the towel look oily and flammable? It... It looks like it was placed, like, not like it's a clump or anything, but like it was draped over this, like a tablecloth almost. As you look closer, you get the outline, like there's something cylindrical about them, and then there's like bumps here and there. You hear a rhythmic, like, tunk, 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 tunk. You're like, well, hey, what are you. Not yet, not yet, not yet. No, no. Of course not. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a uh, oily rag left out to combust. That's all. That's all. I know my way around the oily rag. Don't tell me I don't know my way around the oily rag. No, no, I, I, I believe you. I just a uh, little on edge. He gives you like a big grin and goes, "Okay." <laughs> and you see wow. him like eye the thing, and he kind of like cackles like. <laughs> And then makes his way back. You hear like a sizzling. Uh, Croquel's at the table, presumably. You hear it too. As sounds like, yep, yeah, just normal ass bacon. The good shit. So Jane is on a walk with Bilgy. Yep. Yeah. Where are you heading? Just wandering, not really going anywhere. Looking at the ships, Let's see what ships are here. Let's see if any of the ships are different from yesterday. You're looking up and down. Uh, this section of dock is a little bit clear. Frankly, these docks are generally sparse because trade hasn't been good in this kingdom for a while. Uh, there aren't any ships on either side of you, which is convenient. Uh, one or two of them further down seem like they have guns, but you don't see any, like, armed crews or any, like, guards or anything like that. They're probably just armed vessels or adventurers or something. There's a few warehouses. You look at the place that you reckon might have been a bookstore, but it looks like it's a warehouse for a bookstore. Sure enough, there's no real door. Everything seems to be locked and kind of, like, faded and wooded in that don't open this kind of way. Okay. You see that there's a few guard posts. It's a little early, so, like, they're understaffed. They don't need to be, like, super, super thick. But there's, like, one archer in one spot. There's a few near a gate in another place. Slowly but surely, like, there's some sailors that are already working, like, one or two. Uh, but there are some people coming out of houses and starting to walk towards the warehouses for work and stuff like that. Cool. After a little while, you kind of loop back around the block. 
Your legs are stretched. You get back to the boat. All right, time for food. Food time. Mm-hmm. So you wander at the table. Food time. Food time. Food, food time. <laughs> so you walk back with Bilgy. Uh, she kind of looks up at you. She's sitting on like just a barrel by the edge of the gangplank. Goes, oh, could you get me a bowl or sure. plate? I don't know what breakfast is. It's bacon. Sounds good. You wander up, you head down the plank, or down the hatch. You start to squeeze in. It's reasonably tight. There isn't too much room on this boat. And they're sizzling, and then plates start to get served. This one that gets past Croquil, and then Sun, Ken and Ye. He looks over, passes one for a spot uh, right next to Croquil. Bilgy kind of like circles, circles, hops onto the chair, sits, and then kind of just morphs back. Starts digging in. He passes a plate to Jane, and then he goes, uh, Tiana? Oh, I'm gonna get her her plate. Oh. Just give me hers. And he passes you another plate. Okay, I'm gonna bring that up to Tiana right away. You start then- going up, uh, you plunk one down because you still have to take a plate up the ladder. You can't do two plates. You see uh, Rook are going to eat with the rest of you. You get up there. She's met you. She just kind of grabs it while you've got like one hand on the ladder and you're back down. Cool. So have we heard anything from that uh, Franklin fella? I think we're meeting up with him sometime today before yeah. we leave. I mean, we have a ship at the place. I, I figure he's going to come to us. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, he hasn't paid us yet, so... Uh... What are we supposed to be paid for that? Ooh. I don't know. I mean, I assume we haven't been paid. At least I haven't received my cut. Um... No, we haven't, we haven't seen him again since, so... We haven't been paid yet. Uh, when the check comes in, uh, let me know. I need some uh, some more supplies. Well, you were you were ta- you were tailing the guy, right? So I mean, yeah. worst case scenario, we don't need to know what it costs. You can sit there and not tell him and wait for him to pay you enough. Oh yeah. Speaking of, you find out anything useful tailing him? I forget everything that happened last session. Mm. Um, not gonna lie. I forget all the information that happened as well, and I rewatched it. I should know. I am just the worst. <laughs> to be fair, I watch I watch all of my streams on one point five times speed because I know what happens. <laughs> there was there was dark magic. They were talking about how oh this was me, but it used to not be me. They're doing they were doing nefarious shit. They were doing the life nefarious. Thing. Nefarious, even. <laughs> At this point, uh, Rooker kind of like, he's chewing and he goes, uh, okay, so location, known associates. He's, it's something that only he does. He's like chopping up the bacon into little slices for some reason. Okay. Saves wear and tear on your teeth. Why do you have to say that every time we eat bacon? <laughs> takes a piece with his fingers and throws it in his mouth. And then it's just true. I admire the efficiency. And yet, you don't do it. Oh no, it's uh, something, something about the demon blood makes the, make the jumpers real nice. And I point at my... Uh, I feel like demon touch have slightly unusual canines, you know? like. Just, just that that little pointy anime style, like, uh-huh, you know. I I fudge on the edge factor. I'll say yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. lo- locations. Where'd you go? Okay, so we went. There was a restaurant. Yep, we went to a fancy restaurant. Then we went to a fancier restaurant. Fancy restaurant? No, just like kind of normal restaurant. Fancy restaurant. Prosper. For club. <laughs> we initially initially saw them at the church. Yes. Um, mm. They left the church. 
went to the restaurant, went to an office. From the office, I think they went to the fancier restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then they went to the club. And they met someone in the yeah. fancy restaurant. And they also met someone in the club. Yeah. Do you remember who these people were or what the meetings were about? I remember nothing. I remember vaguely that the meeting in the Prosper Club, Prosperous Club, whatever the hell its name was. I know it wasn't Prospera, but it was. <laughs> um, I think it's just Prosperous. Yeah. Uh, the meeting there was basically them saying, like, look, we'll give the we'll give the dog a bone. Like, we'll let him have a small victory just to get him off right. our back. Referring to the uh, senator. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> the lot of you kind of nervously shrug. You finish up the breakfast and a little bit of time passes. Uh, you spend a bit of the morning just kind of, you know, you swab the deck, make sure the ropes are in order, everything's good. You're kind of. By the time it's the early morning, people are milling about. Uh, people are starting to work in the warehouses. You can see doors being swung open and people moving goods back and forth. Still nothing here at the dockside. What are you guys getting up to? Crafting! It's time for crafting! Oh, All right. Crafting time. So you're working on more of the impact bullets, right? Yes, an improved design. Uh, what's your methodology? Are you doing them in one big batch, or are you doing oh, them yeah. like sixes? Are you doing them like one by one? Oh, this is, it's 100% one big batch. You know, um, God, I don't know if anyone has seen the Winter Garden Wednesdays guy, but he just, he, get, he has like, you know, 32 for everything, and he has to just mm -hmm. make them. And so they're like, okay, time to bend each one of these 32 pieces of metal exactly, and he'll set up like a whole station for it, and he'll, like, drill stuff into his desk so that he can bend them all perfectly. Like, it's like that. Like, each step becomes a whole, a whole glorified process of, you know, you got the rig set up, and just every single one got to go through. All right. At this point, now that you've made it before, uh, want to give me a roll and tell me how far along you would be? Uh, yes. So, uh, I rolled a... Uh, da, 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 da. Let me do some quick math. 12 plus 8 is 20. And that puts me at... Because that'd be um, two silver. Yep. And that puts me at... Let me try in here and do a quick calculation. Um, Doing some math. That is uh, 80%. 88% done. 88? Yes. Okay. So you go through this whole thing. Uh, you've put down all the actual slugs. You've actually like made sure they have the filings proper. There's like slotted in the right way. You've got them at the angle you wanted. So at this point, all that's left is all like the casings and doing the powder and all that. But you've been doing shotgun shells for ages. Uh, you spend most of the morning doing that. And... Meanwhile, as you're like, you know, like filing them down, Kenny, he, like midway through, he comes and he just goes, Hey, um, mind if I just measure one of your things? It's a secret. Good secret. The, the, the shell here? No, oh, no, no. Yeah. Um, an, an item in your possession? Wink. <laughs> Wink? Do you want me to just uh, tell you what's not that much? I, I, like, is it a physical object? Are you, are you trying to... Hey, I, can I, I measure your shotgun? My shot? Well, yeah, of course you can measure my shotgun. I right, mean, I have the measurements. If you, if you, like, if you want them, is there a specific one you need? Like, lower yeah. diameter, barrel length? I... I hand up the shotgun, like... <laughs> Thank you. Any, like grabs it, and he sheepishly, like, walks over to the workshop. You can see him body blocking, like, holding it awkwardly to make sure he you can't he can't see, like, and he goes, okay, okay, and he just passes you back the shotgun. He's got what they need, and he leaves. Uh, Crookwell. Yes? What you doing? 
I feel like I'm trying to distract myself from my anxiety because I can't I can't do anything, you know, scouting and land, it doesn't it's not the same. Warbles mm -hmm. doesn't identify people so well, so I can't even like notice the ambush like at all <laughs> if that's what's going to happen. Like my anxiety is just like through the roof and I need to distract myself. So I feel like I am playing a game with Warble. It's sort of a it's one of those like semi training type games, but it's essentially he taps on a table and I try and locate like I try and touch the same spot. Mm -hmm. But it's basically just like tap calibration. <laughs> All right. So you're going through your day to day routines. You're making sure that like it's functioning effectively as a guide bird to the limited degree a bird can be a guide animal. Uh, you can hear sort of the tinkling, which, if anything, is kind of helping you more than it's helping Warbles as, like, Ricker's sitting there cleaning some stuff. You heard the exchange with Ken and Ye, and then you see him go, he, 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 like, unlatches his crutches, he makes his way up the hatch. Uh, Jane, what are you up to? I'm probably going to go sit at the front of the ship uh, with Tiana, maybe chat a little bit, but wait for people to arrive. All right, both of you are sitting down. Uh, you guys have been running together for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, especially because, you know, like, you guys have run gigs together, like the smuggling gigs and stuff like that, you're used to kind of not talking that much, just watching things, mm -hmm. the occasional discussion, watching people go, come. You're noticing, like, it's the same thing, like dock workers and stuff, and the docks are pretty pretty wide open and you see that there's one of the ships that you saw earlier on your walk uh they're like making sure the si ships are there and it's like this big colorful lump of some sort you don't see the sail unfurled yet they're just kind of affixing it colorful look at that we're Fix, you're kind of like fixating on it and you hear the tapping and then Ken and he goes, oh, hey, um. And then like he kind of awkwardly looks at you and Tiana, then Tiana goes, oh, uh, 56 by 31. He goes, cool. He goes back down. Wait, what was that? What's 56 by 31? She just kind of, she has this big toothy grin, and she goes, yeah. Nothing. Okay. So what do you think that sale is? You think it's a merchant company? The colorful one? Yeah. Because they're just, they're just putting it there. But they haven't raised it, you know? They... I mean, it, um, lo it looks like it was done right, but if they were a merchant vessel, they'd have it kind of hanging loose so people could see it. I'm going to guess they sell fruit. A fruit seller? Yeah. Hmm. Are they near any fruit warehouses, though? Or are they paying someone to do wagons for the fruit warehouses? I'm going to guess... They steal fruit from pirates. I don't know. As a specialized <laughs> cargo, I feel like that's a bit far fetched. But you know what I think? I think, I think it is fruit, and I think the fruit is the front for smuggling other shit because it's easy to just dust that on top. Yeah, yeah. What do you think else they would like? That big colorful banner is bound to draw attention. You know? well, I can't see a single color though. It looks like it's a whole mix of them. Might be, might be painted or something. But it's not. Nobody paints sails all big, elaborate things. Nobody can see that when they. Huh. Tiana just kind of like squints at the ship for a while. Maybe they yeah. sell the fruit from the ship, and they use the flag as like a marketing thing. You know, so people see the big, colorful flag and come over. Hmm. 
Tiana kind of just narrows her eyes even more. You guys hear the discussion going on above. Uh, by now, the morning's getting a little bit later. Uh, my friend's son, below decks, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm almost done. I'm, I feel like one more roll and I'll be done here. All right. And that's so, honestly what I'm going to do. So you're sitting there and you're like, you're taking a moment just eyeing them for a second. You hear Kennedy sit down and he, he's being sheepish again, kind of hiding something from you. You can hear him. Would you be kind of trying to figure out what it is or would you be letting him? Oh, not even remotely. Like, <laughs> it, it's honestly just, like, Kanye does this shit, you know? Like, mm -hmm. every once in a while, Kanye will, as long as there's nothing left that can explode or nothing flammable and he doesn't touch, you know, like, my active shit, I, Kanye kind of does whatever the hell he wants. I also feel that, like, Kanye working on stuff is, like, you know there are some of those puzzles where you don't, see the whole picture until like the very last piece and then it's just like oh, absolutely. oh i totally get it i feel like that's pretty much everything canon Ye works on is pretty much just like you yeah. look over and you just be like a a barrel no no well, not a barrel uh the thing is he's he's like a blacksmith for like the cannons and stuff like that and weapons and stuff and he's a mechanic so he makes all his little gears and puts together the stuff and engineering so like genuinely 90% of the time, it's miscellaneous piping, screws, and gears, or just slabs of misshapen metal. Like, it is always, like, junk.jpg, like the background of a Fallout game kind of tier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about so right. So I feel like if Sun were to even look over, he would just be like, I have no clue what the fuck's going on on there. Back to my work. <laughs> so yeah, both, of you exactly. are, both of you are in your normal rhythms, like, there's kind of the furtive, like, you can hear, like, the kind of, like, groaning of the chair as he's like, okay, muttering, like, one. As you're sitting there, like, you just, you've got all those slugs ready, you slide them off, you've got all the cardboard, you roll it up, you fit it with the bottom cap, you do it bit by bit by bit, you start measuring out the powder, you insert, flatten, and you've got your slugs. How many, by the by? Um, that is a box of 20. I'm also assuming that you rolled enough because you got like an 88 last time. Yeah, yeah. No, they are finalized. They are completed. All right. Uh, are you working on another box then and using the extra momentum for whatever you rolled, or are you starting to work on something different? Um, I don't actually have a whole lot of extra momentum. I almost finished exactly like I am packing oh. her up, put him in a box, and uh, get getting up above deck. All right, so you go, you slot them in, you're working them and feeling them. Like at this point, you kind of know what it should feel like, so it's your last little check. It's kind of going, is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Like, and then you finally shut the box. And then right as you like do the shut, you sort of like straighten up. Can you kind of like whoosh, looks at you? He's just we're, waiting we're, for you to go. Yep, yeah, we're, workshop's all yours. So. Okay. okay. So let me know if you need anything. I guess. <laughs> He's still just like watching you. And I shut the door, and as I walk away, I'm like, oh, love that guy. You can hear him click, like right as you close the door, because it's a latch that works on both sides. Like, he closes it, you hear the slip of the lock as it should be. Weird. All right, and... So now it gets closer to noon. You guys are waiting around, and then, sure enough, Jane, you and Tiana spot. Uh, looks like Senator Franklin coming down. There's a few town guards escorting him over. Cool. He spots you and then kind of waves and starts walking towards the pier. As he gets to the end, the guards kind of look at each other and quietly wander off. This oh hi uh right. Hey. Nope. Oh. oh. I'll uh get Crow Quill up here for this conversation. 
I can go on if it's better. I don't. I don't know what. Oh. Yeah, sure. Okay, come on. Um, then I invite him onto the ship. All right. Uh, are you all going down? Are you, who's staying out uh, to keep watch? Tiana, I think. All right. So you go with Senator Franklin. You go downstairs. You see kind of like a mildly bemused looking son closing the door and it latching itself behind him. Everybody's oh, kind of uh, just gathered down here. Okay. Um, so I, I let him know the locations that we went to and I let mm -hmm. him know any of the information that I remember. Um, Proquil. All right, so you guys repeat basically what you told to me before, but confidently, like you're selling it. Yeah. Uh, you remember the specific names of the restaurants. There was like a, a tea house in this part of town. He knows the spot. There was a restaurant in another part of town. He doesn't know the spot, but the description's enough for him. You, me you mentioned like going to the office, that stuff. He wants to know if you know the names of the people he met. No. He never mentioned them. I don't think he ever said that. Yeah, if I, if I recall correctly, he never said a person's <laughs> name. Any organizations, uh, numbers, bills? Oh, he, he did give me a piece of information about a, like a business thing. And I didn't write it down. I was just kind of like at the time, I'm like, I don't remember this. <laughs> Classical lecture style. Yeah. You know, where you're like, I need to write this down. And then, yeah, no. No, I don't. We didn't get anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, he, well, well, he, like, I, I tell him, like, that he's going to give you a small victory and stuff like that. Yeah. Just to sort of appease you. If it were. He waggles, he waggles a, fig, a finger and goes, and that is good information. You hear the jingling as he goes for some cash. He plonks down. You're not sure what the coin is. You hear a coin being plonked down. Two of them. You, the rest of you see that it's a gold, uh, two gold. Then he goes, "If you remember any of the people or organizations, let me know. Otherwise, um, I probably won't be in touch. But maybe." Okay. Uh, I mean, anything I can do for you before I go? I don't think so. No, no, you, you just be on your way, secrecy and all that. You hear the creaking of a gangplank, and then the hatch opens, and Tiana kind of nervously looks at you, Jane, and kind of goes, Do you want to? Yeah. Just do you stay here? I come out. All right, you come out. And do you want to roll smuggling? I need. I need three dice of same size. Do they, have to be, do they have to be of the same size? Like, you yes. have one big one, one small one, one medium size? Ten, Ten for smuggling. All right. At first, you're not really sure. You're looking around. Things seem normal. Not that many people around, though. The crowd's kind of thin. Some of the warehouse doors have closed. And then, like, this is... It's sort of evolving as it happens. Tiana kind of takes a step back a little, and you see that there's people leaving, but people not coming in the streets crowd thins a bit further. Weird tin goes off in the back. It was the back. back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dago. Okay. Um. Crowd thins further. Okay, I'm gonna get, um, what's his face? He's like, okay, you should, I think there's something going on. You should probably get going. I mean, our whole job is to protect them. Maybe if there's something going on, you should stay right the hell you. It's our job to protect him. He has guards. Is his guard still there? Uh, 
They left when he got to the dock. Okay. Tiana kind of looks at you and goes, uh, speaking of guards and points at a few of the spots, and you look and none of the archers, no one at the, like, you can't see them from here, but you don't see anyone patrolling. There's no one looking over any spots. Okay, I'm going to retract that. Why don't you just stay here for a couple minutes until... Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay. Because, I think, yeah, let's... Yeah, let's just go sit in the front of the ship and keep an eye out, I think. I reassure okay. Franklin. Oh, don't you worry. You know, we're great at conflict resolution. Just going to sit tight. And whoever's got the beef is going to work it out. We can be on our way. It's good to hear. He doesn't seem reassured. <laughs> Above decks, uh, Jane and Tiana, you're looking out and the crowd is... Now it's thin enough that people who are passing and walking down the street are noticing that things are amiss and starting to nervously walk into alleys and stuff. I got my crossbow ready. All right, you go and you grab your crossbow, you look over and you see that there's the ship on the other end of the docks, it unfurls and there's a big, like, splash of different, like, streaks of color. It's presumably all the colors in the rainbow, but it's not a rainbow flag. It's just a flag with a bunch of different colored stripes on it. Okay. Hmm. It's the home of sexuals. <laughs> the home of sexuals? Okay, well. Uh, son, that's not really... <laughs> okay. So you... You look around and so wait, you're like just on the bow of the ship. Are you like off the gangplank? What's I'm good, yeah, in, I'm good a, to say... in a two-dimensional sort of scenario, let's say. Where are you located? On the Cartesian plane. On the on a Cartesian plane. I'm gonna move everyone onto the boat here. Can I uh, control my character? I'm gonna say I'm. I'm. Go I'm just gonna move to the top down map. Actually, I'm there we go. I'm gonna say I'm right there in terms of like a like a two dimensional surface. Okay, Tiana has moved out to there and is kind of like looking off the rear of the ship. I'll say that everyone else is below decks until you come up. If you do, you come up here. Oh, okay. Um. Tiana is, I think you moved, uh, I think that's Bill G. Tiana's on the, on the, de on the docks. Can I move Tiana? She's, she's not on the ship. Or is that where you meant to put her? No, yeah, that's where she Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe I'll be over here then. She's over here. Okay. I... Uh She's a melee up. fighter. If anything, she's staying, like, in... Sorry, I'm just moving so that I can move Tiana back. She's staying that, with you, that's like... That's Jane's token. <laughs> that you're moving. Yeah, I know. I, it, I'm clicking and things are moving. <laughs> that's the World 20 experience. <laughs> Boy, how do you fit in? I'm so getting Jane. I think that the token that you're moving is Bilgey's, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. You moved Bilgey, okay. and then you moved Tiana. All right. Okay. In theory, the whole having little character faces as tokens is charming. In practice, they're really tiny, and you can't tell them apart. <laughs> yeah. I think the I think the big things that said C and J were probably the better move. Yeah. It's, I did I, like those. I, I, Color I think, coding is helpful. I think I was more so a fan of full names rather than pictures. Because my issue was when we had multiple C's or something like mm -hmm. that, we had R's. We had a lot of R's. Yeah. Um, no, just leave it. Just leave it. Okay. Okay, I had it. Can I move it? Right. What are you trying to do? Nothing. 
so you guys are looking around when there is a crack that you hear. There's someone in position behind these crates who has taken a shot at Jane. Oh my god. That's not the right clipboard. And that's going to be for 15 damage, piercing okay. if it makes a difference. I'm going to try or to dodge. Precise, rather. I'm going to dodge. And that was a 15, right? Mm -hmm. All right, okay, so I dodge it. I dodge it. We're good. You dodge out of the way, and right as that happens, you see like a quick flashing of a hand moving, something being put in a click, and then another shot goes off again. Again, and then I'm also gonna like scream at the ship, like defense positions. Like... So this one's gonna be for twelve precise. Okay, okay I dodge again. I get behind this. I guess I, like I'm gonna get behind that barrel. <laughs> All right, Tiana surveys the position and quickly backtracks behind these barrels. I'm gonna line up a shot at that guy who's shooting at me. Mm -hmm. So he's behind some cover. Just letting you know. Yes. I'm gonna shoot anyway. As soon as Jane, like, shouts that we're under attack, uh, I'm just kind of going to go, Warbles, it's time. And, like, tr like let's get up. <laughs> we need to get up there. We need to move now. <laughs> as you're saying that, Sun is in the bottom with uh, Franklin. He says, <laughs> John Blake, resolution. And he goes and he runs to uh, to get uh, Condonier ready for the apparatus. On the boat. You're going to fire a fucking cannon on a dude at a dock? Uh, yeah. Will, is there some sort of massive damage rule system? You cannot orient your ship in its current position. I will not bar that as a tactic. I will say that everyone needs to, like, unmoor the ship to do that. Ah, I see. We're still moored. Oh. Ah, beans. 23 to shoot at this guy. All right, you pop off the shot at 23. This guy ducks his head underneath, but your crossbow still manages to ping, and you hear an Arr! You said it was 23 damage? Yeah. Okay. Where's my pencil? There it is. So, anyone else taking actions? Uh, uh -huh. When you say get the apparatus, Kenan Ye just laughs as if, like, you didn't realize you were telling a joke. He goes, okay, wait, 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 wait. And he clambers on down towards the munition, towards the munitions room, he unlatches it. You see him furl back the towel. He grabs something. You hear a click. He grabs something else. You hear a click. And then he goes, catch! And he, like, he, he faints once so you can prep for the throw, and then he chucks it the second time. It's something tubular. You catch it, and you see what the measurements were for. This is an underbarrel attachment. Hmm. Well, that'll be... I don't know if we're going to get the ship around in time, but... Uh... I figure you might want to test an opportunity. Should fit the slugs. And he chucks, uh, he goes, hey, hold on. And he does another mime. He chucks it and you catch another one. And he goes, Jane too. Jane or Tiana? What, what? Jane. Okay. Tiana is not a ranged combatant. Tiana's melee. But he took the measurements from... Tiana probably knows. 
the measurements of my crossbow. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, them I am, in that case, I am using my movement to uh, head to the top deck there. Yeah, right. I used my movement to also head up there. So, Crocodile, you get there first. Uh, you let warbles out immediately, and in like a blaring kind of way, like Warbles is almost mesmerized. You hear like colors, 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 colors. Uh, as you guys are getting ready, there's a sloshing of water and another sloshing of water. There's someone who oh, crawls yeah. out of the water off the edge of the deck, does not get all the way, or sorry, not the edge of the deck, the edge of the pier, doesn't get all the way onto the pier, just kind of clambers on enough to get cover and starts getting ready to shoot. Uh, to that, Croquil is going to just, like, point in his direction and go, Son! <laughs> like, uh, and I am going to boon Son for his next attack. <laughs> All right, you point in the direction you heard. Sun looks over and sees, like, right off the edge of the deck, just a sort of lump. And then, sure enough, you can see who, who Croco's talking about. Right here, in the middle of the pier, someone else comes out. By now, you can see a motif. They're all, like, armored opponents, sort of, like, knightly looking. There's one that's in pink, one that's in green, and one that's in gray so far. Hmm. So the pink one lunges at Jane with a stiletto. You can see an arming sword in the other hand. <laughs> Dodge. <laughs> okay. So this one's going to be for... 18. Oh, precise. That hits, that hits me. As this happens, you hear a shuffling. Tiana vaults over, turns towards this knight, and starts going for like a shiv, shiv, shiv. Swings around to flank. Oh, you can rotate them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I guess that's... You can technically rotate in a full 360, but I like to do it on the usual uh, axes of like up, down, left, right, and of course the diagonals. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly use it for like aesthetic purposes more than yeah, anything. Not that this is an aesthetic. Way. An aesthetically pleasing map. This is very much. I do like it, though. I do like it. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, so you had the green one pointed out to you. Yes, I, I had the green one pointed out to me. Um, mm -hmm. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's we're all oh, cool. kind of doing batch turns. Like you got the we're under attack, and now everyone's emerging as you're all emerging. Okay, uh, let me just see how far it is. Uh, I believe my movement is da, 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 speed. I have heavy armor on, so I believe it's four, or heavy break. Uh, so that's four, no, eight, seven, yeah, four, th four, two, five, two, five, three. I think it's five, three. Um, Alright, so I can move 25, uh, which would be enough to get to about here. Um, yeah, so I'm booking it down here to the uh, to that barrel there. Uh, gonna take a pot shot at Pink. Um, and Pink is wearing armor, right? Uh, yes. Everyone's wearing armor. Uh, you just right. kind of see a flash of metal as you... Look closer, you figure play to some sort. Okay, uh, well, in that case, I'm loading up one of my, uh, one of my specialty rounds that I just finished making. No better chance mm -hmm. to chest them out, I suppose. And I am taking a heavy shot with Musketeer. Mm -hmm. And let me see what that roll is. 
Okay, so uh, we got two, 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 five. Uh, that is a total of twenty-five damage. All right, and how much is the push? And the push is uh, five square. All right. <laughs> Oh, so he's going to go <laughs> flying into the water. <laughs> there he goes! Hits the dock. Yeah, blast it all the way to the other side of the dock. Boom! Fill your hands, magenta scum! And uh, so, uh, I'm chucking the underbarrel thing to Jane. Alright, so with the first shot, the poof! You feel like the buck leg and your rear leg has to compensate a little bit. Uh, you hit the pink knight all the way off the edge of the pier, and there's a floof, like a sloshing of water as she goes, like, deep under. Meanwhile, the... Whoop, well, we oh. lost Gabe. Oh, no! We lost Gabe. You lost me. There he goes. Get on my own. Oh, 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 shh. It really lost me. Amen. Yeah, I know I'm disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. that's very helpful. Very helpful, Discord. Thank you. Okay, okay. Should we come back any second now? I'll hear your wonderful voices. Okay, please do. He's there we back. go. He's back. There we We're go. back. Okay, good. There is a crack. What does Musketeer do again? Musketeer, I get plus five damage, and I can do a heavy shot that deals an additional two d six damage and five squares once per turn. Okay. Uh, if it needed to be said preemptively, all of you are sailors. You're deeply proficient swimmers, even in armor. And. All right, so a 24 to hit. Against you. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, precise. 24 precise. Sorry, okay. I should say heavy. It's heavy. Can I close call this? <laughs> yep. Um, oh, that is... Can I use close call even after he's calculated threshold? Or, like... Uh, yeah, there's no way I'd be able to beat that even if I dodged. Okay, so, so I'm, uh, just, I'm just going... I'm just basically telling Sun what to do, just being like, Sun, <laughs> duck! <laughs> hey! <laughs> so you're hit, with, you're hit with a shot, and it's... Luckily, because of Croquil's previous help, this didn't deal sneak attack damage. You're hit with a crack, and oop! And you're launched out into the water. Uh... Oh, <sighs> <laughs> All right. Has anybody? Does anybody still uh, have turn I, actions they need to take? Like my turn action from booning him got reset, right? From booning Sun. Uh, that would have been. If you didn't use it, then you didn't use it. Yeah, I, did, I didn't use the boon. I was oh. I was saving it for a. Uh... Well, e either way, um, I'm going to move over here. I'm just assuming that I have the movement for it because I'm not wearing armor. And yep. just have... You, you stay low. Uh, you clamber towards there. I will say, though, that you aren't sure the locations of anything off the edge of the ship, so you got to go square by square. What do you mean I have to go square by square? You're blind. You don't... Yeah, I know. I, I, what, <laughs> I, what I want to do is basically I'm asking Warbles to aim me in the direction of green and I'm going to fire a blast in that area. All right. A cool. elemental force blast. So you clamber along, you use a bit of druid magic. It's a simple communication compared to a lot of other things that would seem simple but aren't. This one's just kind of where, and then Warbles goes for the green one. Okay. You hear like a caw right at the right moment, and you point in the direction. Roll spectacularly. Uh, that's a nine. All right, the shot fires off, and you hear it splash into the water. Okay. Um. So this the turn has 
this is a new turn. No, uh, I'm basically asking, making sure everyone's taken the last of their turn actions. Um, I still have off turns. Can I use them to swim towards the boat? You can. You may want to save them. You may not. Um, but has it been a new oh, turn shit. since Gray has shot at me? Like, Gray shot at me, and then I shot at them. Is this a new turn? Yeah, or no. Is this... this is a new... Oh, no. it's not. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Um, well, um... I forgot I was swimming. I wouldn't be able to get very far on an off turn. Uh, yeah, I'll save my main movement for that. So Kennedy comes out above decks. You see him sur surveying the scene. He gets low behind cover, and he seems to be waiting. After hearing that there's a fight happening, Bilgy and Rooker come out, and they're change forms for a, bro for a brief moment, see that there's no harm, and then switch to their true forms. Bilgy like, surveys the scene for a moment, runs next to Croquill. Uh, you get a brief warning, like, gunshot, and then crack, you hear a gunshot. <coughs> nice. As far as you can tell, you see the green one sort of, like, drop backwards under the water and swim under the dock. Likewise, pink is swimming under the dock. Okay. Um, I should still have movement, right? Yep. Okay, I'm going to... How do I see how far it is? Distance-wise. This button? Mm-hmm. Oh, you got a selector tool. Snap to center. Just click snap to center. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, five and then two. Okay, so that should be my, my move, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to run up on the ship and then get like here to get out of the out of the way of the the docks with with no with nothing nothing to help me. All right, so you make your way back to the ship so that you can at least use the edge of the ship as some sort of cover from incoming fire. You scamper your way back aboard. Tiana's kind of still got a bit of movement, so she backs up behind the barrels, but is waiting in case anybody tries to run up to the ship. And is that... Okay, I think I'm just missing one. All right, so in that case, uh, you guys are seeing this stuff happen. If you've got remaining off turns, interrupt when it happens. Gray just doesn't move, is waiting on a shot. You think based on your really, with your angle, you can't see where green is, but you can see pink moving back towards the stairs. You can also see here from the alleys, people getting ready. They see that you're sort of in a firing position. They're looking to each other. You can see, like, pointing being done. Knights of various colors getting ready. These ones run to cover. Oh, These ones run to cover. Can you go to scroll up so that oh, we can Oh, I gotta see scroll up on. so I can see the rest of it. Fuck. That's literally what I see right now. Oh, yep, that's a couple more. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and these ones, you can see them going, and then they time it and sprint for cover. Like full jangling, like angled forward 45 degrees, like, mm -hmm. and they slide all the way down towards those barrels. This spot here is a gazebo, so you can see through it. There's oh, just okay. a roof over it. This is a porch. As is this. Oh, neat. Oh. Okay. So they've moved into position and they're still waiting. It's your turns. Okay. Um, how much movement do I have in the water? Is it halved? 
Uh, I'll say because specifically you guys are a ship crew that it's just normal. All of okay. you guys are have, are lifelong swimmers. Uh, you've swum in deep ocean. You're you're good. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm moving over to here. Oh, not on the boat, but like to the side of the boat. Mm. Um, can I take my action to fire my gun at the mooring rope to try and sever it? Uh, yes, but I'm going to get you to do a different roll depending on what ammo you're shooting at the rope. You also, uh, at, before you make this decision, you see the green knight going here and getting ready to climb up towards Tiana. Okay, well, um, we have a lot of people on deck. You know, I'm kind of in the water. Uh, okay, yeah, I have my shotgun. It's just standard, yeah, it's standard. So you know, uh, shot aiming at that rope. I would. I don't have a knife on me. I'll use that. All right. Uh, you're accurate enough to hit, but because it's a shot shell, uh, tell me if it's an odd or even number, and what the number is. Okay. Well, I guess um, if I know the number, I don't need to know if it's odd or even. Well. I'm hoping for evens, and it is a uh, an 18, which is even. All right, you fire, and the rope frays and snaps. You see it kind of singed a little bit by the powder, too. And I'm using my off turns. Now, this might be a bit much, but I'm trying to hold my breath and dive under the boat to appear on the other side. All right. Uh, just keep in mind, you're going to have to take an action, but it can be a minor one, it can be on an off turn, it can be on the same turn you attack and load your weapon, but you're going to need to, like, actually get the water out of your gun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, for sure. All right. Kind of an oversight that you have a, a shotgun as a ship pirate, and Cannon Ye hasn't fashioned some, like, water locking system that's basically just, like, you know, how bolt rifle, you just kind of go like that, it just, like, plunges the water from the system. I feel like, I feel like, no, definitely our ammunition is, you know, uh, greased and waxed to keep the moisture out, mm -hmm. um, and to slide it to barrels and stuff better, but, uh, no, once you dunk a gun underwater, it's, ooh, I'm cringing mm -hmm. to myself as I do this. So, you see off the edge of the boat, the Green Knight goes to grab Tiana by the leg and lunges with a dagger, but Tiana quickly just kind of, like, goes, <gasps> with their own daggers, and there's a spurt of blood, and the Green Knight drops. You see the Green Knight hasn't stopped moving, but is swimming away raggedly. I'm going to okay. save my off turns. I... So, you, you see, you see my, my, yeah. my thing here. I want to do a line them up would this be, could I do it here? Uh, based on the exact geometry you've got, you can do it on yellow and white or brown and white. Okay, I'm going to do it on yellow and white. I will say they're all distinctively costumed, so when you go to check out an enemy, uh, if you want more specific information, it's pretty obvious. Okay. So I'm going to do, um, line them up. Mm -hmm. Can I also, okay. Can I also do sniper at the same time? Uh, tell me, so line them up is basically like it's the twofer. It doesn't consume any of your off turns, does it? It doesn't say that. I, like what I wrote down was um, three more creatures, mm -hmm. XD6 damage for the X thing. So yeah, line, them the... up, line them up, as I recall, doesn't consume off turns, but Sniper did. Sniper okay. does. Okay. Um... So I will say, because normally you're not supposed to add them together, Okay. this is like a one in a million moment, and because you're using line up, you're like, wait for it, wait for it, and you pop off the shot. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be... Plus 50 and double. 
plus 50 and doubled. Yeah. Would you okay. like a boon? <laughs> <laughs> just going to offer it. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> what, okay, what's a, what's a boon? You roll all sixes. Well, it's, yeah. it's plus 50 and doubled, and then after you've done the calculations, I'll say that you add the sniper to that flat. You don't add it after the splitting. Okay. Because you do split line them up between the enemies you hit, if I remember. Yeah. Uh, line them up just does... I have the rules. You you do normal damage to the first one, and then I think you do... 3d6, 2d6, and then 1d6. 3d6, okay. 2d6. So then it would just yeah. be basically the sniper shot on white, and then the 3d6 on yellow. Yep. Okay. Sniper shot on white. Would you like a boon? <laughs> sure. You have a okay. boon. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, 24. Um, plus four would be 28 for the boon, just as a normal like, shot. Mm -hmm. On white, plus 58 is 78, times two is 156 on white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor white. And then. So, <laughs> sorry. So, you know uh, give me the damage for yellow. And for yellow, that's just 3d6. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be 8 plus 3 is an 11 for yellow. <laughs> Yellow's like, thank God a white was there. Oh, God. <laughs> That's just the fucking blood splatter coming from white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so you, you line up the shot, you see them all getting ready. Brown is this big heavy one in chain holding two axes. Yellow in the back is holding a spear. White is in the front with a big, like, showy plume, a rapier and a sword getting ready. And you fire off the shot, like, right into the neck at the base of the helm above the, like... Ooh. neckline basically there's a gorget and it's like a one in a million shot right through there's a spurt you see the white plume go red and the body just slumps you see like in utter bafflement which you can somehow manage to discern even underneath the helm yellow plucks the crossbow bolt out of a space like in between plates in the like right arm <laughs> Nice. <laughs> the 11 is just horror damage. Oh, God. <laughs> it's what the fuck damage. Yeah. <laughs> so yellow off turn shoves the body and moves into that spot. Poor white. This is the worst Power Rangers group I've ever seen. <laughs> Didn't even care about their friend being downed. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Power Rangers would be very upset about that, and then they'd oh, yeah. work, and then, and then the big bad guy explodes. They, yeah, they'd spend about a solid minute like talking to this person who is now dead on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Yellow... Yellow holds up the spear, you see like a surge of lightning, and then almost like throwing with a lacrosse stick lobs over a ball of lightning and ducks back behind cover. It lands here, affecting Rutger, Bilgy, and Crowquill with lightning damage. Uh, I'm... So that's going to be for uh, six. Sorry, seven. I'm a little bit sad that I do have to ward this. <laughs> Man, I miss Reggie. <laughs> I miss Reggie who just didn't take any damage from anything. <laughs> oh, classic. I have two threshold. I do have to ward this. <laughs> but literally anything I roll is going to get me to that threshold, so it's fine. <laughs> so you see Bilgy like tank the hit without even noticing, just kind of twitch, leap off, and hide within the works of this crane here. Rooker, like, lets off, like, a bearish roar, like, oh, and you see him patting his arm that's singed. Anyone else got actions to take? Uh, has Proko gone? Oh, yeah, it's the start of turn, isn't it? 
Um, like, I, yeah. I feel like as I'm spluttering, coming up for air on the other side of the ship, I'm just trying to reel my plan of get the ship turned around. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I can't steer. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to steer. Just blast before you see if you can move the ship away from the dock or something. I'm not that powerful. <laughs> uh, um, um, yeah, you are. I have two dots in elemental. <laughs> It would be enough to like quickly just go whoop and just surge the water a bit. Like you wouldn't go foom and like skid away. Like you would just kind of go whoop and start to waft away from the pier so you could turn. Yeah, that's all we need. Hey, water. Whoa. I I don't think it's enough, but I'll tell you what. I'll do mm. it as my off turn. Is that okay, Will? <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because uh, I want to use my main turn. Green is mm -hmm. in the water, correct? Yeah. And the water has animals in it, correct? Mm -hmm. I would like to use Grove. <laughs> oh, no! Um, so there were... Uh, there was. Updates. I will say... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, like there were, there were updates to whichever Henge is the animal magic, right? Like, I can summon an animal... Or mm -hmm. multiple animals, depending on how many dots I have. Yeah. I think I want to summon a big. <laughs> a, a pig? A big. A big. A big. A pig? A pig. <laughs> a pig. Oh, <laughs> the water pig just arises. <laughs> so oh, I'll, give you a moment to th I'll give you a moment to think about a big, get the stats ready, uh, and calculate some stuff in the meanwhile. Gray fires off, crack, crack, crack. Uh, one shot against Jane. Uh, you don't have any off turns because the sniper. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. <gasps> I'm not gonna and dodge. You, you sniped. So that's gonna be for 13 precise. Okay, that hits. It's one shot against Ken and Ye that seems like it hit. You see him sort of, like, graze. There's a spurt of blood, kind of like a gash on his shoulder, but he seems fine. And then one of them goes off towards Rooker. This one gets jammed in the woodworks of the crane, but there's still, like, a couple of shards of wood that get embedded, and you see him pluck one out of his arm, looking a little dismayed. Quick question. If mm -hmm. my armor is good against precise, do I take half damage? Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I I thought it. Oh no! Yeah, that's a good it point. No, it's double. Yeah, you have double threshold. Oh. Your okay. armor specifically has double threshold. Mm -hmm. My armor has double threshold. Which I think is all of your threshold. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. All right. So that shot's gone off. Uh, Croquil, a big. Um, as far as stats go, I think the maximum stat they're able to have is 75 health. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm remembering the rules correctly. Uh, but a big. Um, how, how many square of big? I don't. I don't know. I don't know how this works. I don't know. I'll how just this say. Works, well. I'll say this big. I have four dots. <laughs> what does four dots get me in size for a big? <laughs> There's something. It's underwater, and you know what's coming. What are you doing with it? I'm. I'm going to have him grab Green and drag him down. Ooh, yeah, that's ooh. Grab, grab and drag. Grab and drag. Good old classic. Uh, let's see here. So, drag his ass. Uh, that's, eight, that's sixteen. That's twenty. Okay. So, normally these things fly from an, like the open sea, or not fly. You know, like they swim up in the open sea, or they come from a nearby cave. This thing was under the dock, just deeper. It reaches out kind of lunges, grabs him, and then pulls him under that dock again, and you don't hear anything else. 
I summon bad things. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then for my secondary action I'm gonna off turn elemental wind to try and turn us. <laughs> Alright. Give me a roll for that. Uh I took it off because this thing's now back under the pier, but you like you still have it summoned. I rolled a, I rolled two ones. Nice. Combined with my plus four, that's a six. You still think oh, I'm his ultimate force mage? You still think I'm amazing at this? I do you kind of like... Is. <laughs> there's like a waffle back and forth, but you don't have it at the right angle with the wind. That's my turns. I got none. <laughs> I also right. got none. You see Pink run off and leave the edge of the map to regroup. There's then... Uh, you see... Brown run up, yellow kind of run part way and then nervously stay in the same spot. Blue and back, blue and black move to the wagon. I know what happens when I get in lines. <laughs> <laughs> orange and yellow both move now. You see orange grab a bottle of some sort and throw it. At the same time, it's that same like lacrosse lightning move with yellow. Both of them targeting like here. So that should be Bilgy, Rooker, and Ken and Yi. I'm rolling for random purposes. You hear like grumbling from everyone. Bilgy seems fine. Kennedy seems more dazzled than anything. And he, you hear him go, Okay, we're playing that game! It's back to your turns. And you see him put both of his crutches up against the edge of the ship. He aims them. And then sort of like with an inverted little trigger with his pinkies, there's these clusters of three on each one of them. And he goes, doo -doo 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 -doo. Of course they're gods. You had so way far. too much fun thinking of contraptions oh. for Ken and Yang. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so it's AoE firearm damage twice in the same spot. They kind of like scatter, so you guys have a moment where they're not uh, in cover. If you want to off turn or turn anything, and then they scramble right back in. Uh, well, what, what's it, what's it going to take to get me up the side of this ship? You uh, can just climb it. You can just... There's a ladder right there. All right. All right. I'm, I'm, poof, I'm scrambling up to the top, looking dismayed at my gun. Um, I'm, lo I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at Kenny Gay and just go, apparatus. And I'm looking at, uh, I forget his name, the cook. Rooker. Big boy. Rooker. Rooker. So can, can he get a swing around? Rooker kind of goes, not fast enough, they storm the ship. Ah. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I'm moving up here. Um, and uh, is, there, is there anything I could poke or push? Like, ah. All right, well, I'm taking cover behind the railing. That, ah, man, man, ah, what to do? Shit. Um. <laughs> oh. Oh, we probably have explosives. <laughs> hmm? Uh. We probably how, have explosives. How long explosives. would it take me to get down deck and grab some sort of uh, explosive device and get back up? I'm going to say that you ran out on your last adventure and you haven't taken the time to build them back up yet. Ah, shit. Uh, we don't so, like, it would be bombs. normal for you to have a bunch of bombs below deck to throw, but, like, you're out. We don't have ten firebombs. How terrible. We don't have ten firebombs. We don't have ten uh, firebombs. Uh, thank God. Is there, like, a stick I could use to push against the dock? <laughs> like, that's not even... That's not even a thing really big ships have! Damn it. How do you usually get the ship moving? I love your dedication to the apparatus there, Gabe. <laughs> well, 
Luigi just waggles a sword and goes, just hold a moment, just hold. Okay. I'm, I'm, then in that case, I am uh, taking my action to empty my gun and uh, taking cover behind the railing, not like head out, ready to fire, just straight up, like ready to hold if there's a, like if they breach the ship, basically. All right. So you're peering out every now and again. You're shaking this out. You awkwardly like crack it. You use a bit of your shirt going up. And then you think it's good enough and you. Anyone else taking actions? Uh, so I'm going to. Do I get a he's dead from whatever creature I have summoned? <laughs> like is you that get, a... you get directly from the creature that it's not satisfied yet. You don't know dis definitively if that means it's still hungry or if it's taken him down. Ooh, you do you boo. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let him do his thing. Just, yep, you do you, and uh, I'm actually gonna you... prep. Hmm? So, right as that happens, like, after you've resolved your action, you feel, like, a twinge of pain from this thing. Ooh, something's Ooh. putting up a fight. Keep going, boy, keep going, get him! Get him! Get him. I'm gonna fire a shot at Gray. All right. Uh, I was going to say after after that, I'm going to prep what is a reaction. Mm -hmm. I'm basically prepping a counter spell, <laughs> as it were. If they send another lightning thing, an another AOE, I want to elemental counter it. All right. So you're getting yourself ready with that. You're just kind of like, you know you're against cover, there haven't been shots going your way, things have been grazing you, you think you're in a good spot, so you're just ready. Yeah. Alright, a 20 to hit Gray. Alright. Gray kind of sputters, there's a shot reflexively that shoots way wide, and then Gray retreats off the street. Nice. Meanwhile, for the rest of them, they get ready, and then these guys start running at like a low, like a low-headed sort of tilt. Blue has a shield and starts to raise it. Red le leaps over the cover and starts to raise a shield. They pause for a moment, and then all of them start advancing down the pier. Jeez, these guys have fucking movement. <laughs> yeah. These squares are also a little bigger than what the drawing would entail. Yeah. Not enough that it's worth really tweaking, but that, like... <laughs> no, it, it's just one of those things where, like, that that's only like five squares, but I'm constantly just like, oh fuck. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, there they go. <laughs> I forgot these guys can move. <laughs> All right, it's your turns again. Hmm. Go fight my monster. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> can... Uh, are you telling it to abandon its target and go after these ones? Nope. Keep on that target. All right. <laughs> Keep on green. Keep on green. Uh, Sun looks at Crowcomb and says, I thought I told you to turn the ship around. It didn't work. Like I told uh, you it wouldn't. Uh, you know, fair enough. Well, you did your best and I'm proud of you. Okay, I'm going to do... And if you Another listened to me when I told you to duck, you wouldn't have been shot off the pier. <laughs> with red and blue. All right. Okay, so that's normal attack and then 3d6 for the second one. Okay. 
Okay, 18 for red. 18 doesn't hit. Ooh. You fire off the shot, red raises the shield and catches it, and it doesn't puncture all the way through. Okay. Uh, Anyone else? Or are you guys all <laughs> lying in wait? Um, I am... I want to say that Croquil tells him to uh, fire an AoE blast, and that's going to be another boon. <laughs> all right. Croquil's telling who what? Uh, Sun, because they're right next to each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're able to do that with guns, right? Because someone just did it. Ken and Ye just did it, but that might with be the underbarrel attachment. Ah. Well, which I mean, means Ken uh, has one too. I have one? Yeah, mm -hmm. I tossed it to you. Oh. That's the whole reason I came out there and got knocked off the pier was to hand you that. <laughs> and I say, okay, great. Okay, oh, I can do it, I guess, if you yell at me. Take Screw it, because Sun's not listening to me. I told you, you can just do it as an attack. <laughs> I was I was going to do it. I, <laughs> I tell him to I, shoot I, green, I, he doesn't shoot green. I tell him to duck, he doesn't <laughs> duck. Gets blasted off the pier. <laughs> well, I mean, it would be nice to know what this thing does. And I kind of peek over and I, uh, I fire a shot. Um, as a just straight weapon roll, that is mm -hmm. a... Well, it's a boon, so it's max sixes. Oh! Sixes. Uh, in that case, it is a 28, uh, and that's not counting musketeer or anything. Uh, oh. the rest of them wouldn't apply, this is kind of like lobbing a grenade? Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So that's a 28. Alright. Um, and obviously Centronet, uh, right there. So this was explosive. This was packed with what you presume was some explosive rounds you made for Ken and Ye a while back. Now that this is empty, it looks like it's only going to accept special am ammunition. Uh, but you fire off the rounds into the middle of the pier. I'll say that it's kind of a thing where you go tunk, and then the line em up goes off. So what was that? The line em up? Oh, oh no, yeah, wow. we resolved that. So you go tunk, it's caught in the shield, you see red kind of like, whoa, whoa. and then right as that happens, there's a punk in the middle of the pier, and all of them get shredded by a little bit of shrapnel. Hmm. You see orange uh, kind of like starting to back away and get behind another bit of cover, just kind of haltingly, not to attack, just to safely retreat. Um, hmm. Uh, I guess I would use my... I am still trying to think of a way that I could turn this dang boat around. Is that if I took it, if I shot one of those explosives, I wouldn't do enough to move a boat underwater, eh? Uh, so Rooker just grabs you, he looks you in the eyes and he goes, Not this time, different time, do our plan. <sighs> Well, I suppose. Maybe next time we do it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. It's not a. It's not a pride thing. I say, is I'm loading another shot. It's just <laughs> it seems more efficient to use our uh, our big guns on a big group. I think you just want to see what happens when one of your cannonballs hits a person. I got some theories. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay. All right. So they they seem to have handled the blast. All of them start moving. Uh, the creature is ready again. You feel it kind of like moving closer. Orange retreats. And these ones move forward. Has creature dealt with green? Yeah, like is it is it like I'm ready for more or like you don't have that much communication with this thing. Hmm. I think it's about time it, it lays off. I want it I want it to come up basically right behind them. <laughs> just right. grab grab someone's leg and Yeah, basically Whoa. just grab another one. Just like 
More! More for the slaughter! <laughs> so as they all start getting ready, and you can see Bilgi and Tiana basically like flexing about to pounce, Yellow just gets yanked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Grokul, you should see the look on his face. I love, I love Druid. I love Druid. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> I hate magic in like every other RPG system I've ever played, but I love Druid so goddamn much. So Bilgi moves forward to meet them. He's getting ready for a lunge. As he's doing that, Tiana grabs Red's shield and just yanks it to the side to open the guard. Bilgi plunges a sword in that kind of like grazes too close. It almost would have been a hit. Red seems frazzled by it. Uh, you guys have turns. Okay. I'm calling out last chance to surrender. And I'm uh, aiming at... Does blue also has a shield? Does black have a shield? Uh, black and brown do not have shields. Have Technically, okay. black has a buckler, but like. Uh, well, in that case, I'm uh, moving over here and uh, taking a shot at black. Uh, this is a heavy shot with a uh, musketeer, dealing a total. I just realized uh, I didn't need to ward. I was in a I was in a unit. <laughs> I shouldn't have worded that. Oh well. It's been a while. I have not been considering units at all, actually. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I wasn't in a unit. Yeah, earlier. you were pretty separate for most of it. Yeah. So. Uh, that is twenty nine, and it's oh no. Uh, actually, that would be. Hang on a second. Let me do some real quick math here. Uh, four plus five plus six plus two plus two plus five plus six Quick plus maths. four. Uh, so that's thirty-four Ooh. and uh, back five squares on black. Oh goodness, that's awesome. all right. You line up another shot, and then there's a poof. You see him like almost ready to try and handle it, and then he gets boom launched off the pier, like uh, pink. Uh, and then uh. I want to try this um, under barrel thing that I was I was thrown earlier. Well, now that I'm right beside, well, that's part of the reason I came up beside you. I hand you one of the explosive rounds. Perfect. Give me that. And I don't know the range of this thing, so I'm gonna like aim it. You've seen the arc, so it's enough to kind of go. Eh, fuck it. Okay. Aim for the feet. Easier so, yeah. to hit harder than dodge. Um, so what do, do I roll for that? Or yep, your that weapon damage. My weapon damage? Okay. Fourteen. It was kind of a bad roll. All right. Fourteen, you said? Yeah. So you launch it, and there's shrapnel from the pier kind of spattering a little bit, but they seem to have handled the hit for the most part. Uh, doing a bit of math. Quick maths. Quick maths. Put <laughs> pressure on. Well, the thing is... Gabe's in school. Will and I are out of school. We don't need to worry about math anymore. I'm in school. You're also yeah, in school, school. But you haven't had to do quick maths. I, yeah, I don't really have to do any quick maths. Honestly, even when I was in school, I would use calculators whenever I could because I didn't want to make the stupid mistake. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I would, like, even things like 7 plus 6, I would type that in. Yeah. You know? Like... <laughs> I don't, it's I don't just one of those things where it's like, if you're really doing the math on a project or you're doing an assignment, like, it's not the big things that are going to fuck you up. It's going, okay, and uh, that's 20, and not thinking about the calculation you just made. Yeah. yeah. You, guys have, you guys have known me long enough that you probably know that I am very prone to those mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, all the time, I will ignore negatives or, like... You know, I, I, like, 
3 minus negative 3, and it'll be like 0. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a burst of lightning that happens underneath the water. It okay. jostles Black, who gets electrocuted by it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Well. <laughs> oh no, fishy! I'm not gonna lie, that that was something I was planning from before you shot the guy off the pier, and that's just how it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Is fishy okay? Uh, you felt that a little crook, Will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's another one. I didn't even notice the other one by red. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Crow, go ahead. So, at, it wouldn't be you that notices it, but uh, I'll say Ken and you goes, eh, check it out. And then Jane and Son, you both look over and you see upside down, sort of facing like green, just kind of going back and forth with the water underneath the pier. <laughs> oh, that's just a sad display. I'm, I'm calling out again. Look, we don't, we don't have to go through with this. At this point, they kind of look at each other and they start retreating. They're making a slow, paced, like in-unit retreat to try and get away from you guys. I want to force blast them into the wall. <laughs> Can I? I guess I'm a little far away. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm actively putting a hand out to kind of gently lower uh, Jane's crossbow, like, all right, just, just let him go. All not right. worth it. Uh, I'm going to... <laughs> like, I'm not stopping you. That's more of me being like, hey, maybe not. But I, like, have the crossbow up. Like... <laughs> you, you can swap me away if you really want to. But... This is also three people in heavy armor retreating down the bridge, going, retreat, back, back! So, Croquil, you basically have an audible location for, like, clunk, 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 moving back on creaking wood. Force blast. I forget, how does damage work in a blast? Because I've only uh, ever done magic darts. I believe with a blast, it's minus five. Okay. Yes. Alright, um... I, I took a decent amount of damage that fight. Yeah, you're spent for it, you really can. Yeah. Uh, so that basically does that. Uh, that's 8, and I no, want to convert... Oh, since it's oh, like 4 yeah, damage, I, I want to convert 5 to 1 movement. Okay, roll odds or evens. Uh, odds, always odds. I rolled a 1, cool! <laughs> Got it! <laughs> Alright, so... Crocodile doesn't, you have no idea, you just fire it off, and they all kind of lurch back. Their unit breaks, They're, they haven't fallen off the pier, but they kind of wobble. Blue gets yanked. Oh, <laughs> there he goes. Oh. You see yellow surface. <laughs> yeah! Squishy! Okay. That fish is doing work. Ooh. Um, kid is you see squishy surface. Oh. It's, it's almost one of those things where you think some kind of foam or something surfaced up, but you kind of see just ragged pinkish lumps of flesh. Oh. Aww. Fishy. I could probably cook that. Silly. Um, so with that, I'm basically just going to be like, capture blue. <laughs> Like, we need to know why this happened. I mean, listen, if, if you want to go prolong it and have this team of mercenaries come for their friend, I mean, I suppose we could capture for information. Would Just you rather not have the information and this happen again? <laughs> no, I, I, think we should, I think we should take them. No, I mean, let's Give them a bit of a beating, you know? Well, we don't have to do that yet. Cut his ear off. Okay, well, well, you guys have a bit of time to think. They all start retreating. You I see Blue desperately cram scramble back up. Oh, okay. Someone awesome. catch him. God damn it. <laughs> well, I mean... 
It's up. I mean, it's up to you. If you want to prolong this fight, they're retreating. I Keep can't on. go catch him. Someone needs to go catch him. <laughs> I'm like. I mean, he can't. He he looks. You know, he looks pretty. Uh, pretty. I'm gonna fire there. a pain dart at Blue to get him to pass the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you raise your hand for the pain dart, I am gonna come over and say, "Well, if you're gonna do it, might as well not miss." And uh, I help, I help, I help guide your hand just a, just a little to the left to try and hit him. So you suddenly see why the odd and even roll goes off. You just kind of point the hand slightly as if you're aiming a gun, and you see it go between like the wheel and the arm of the crane, but it's pointed in the right direction. Ooh, fire when ready. That is a pain dart of eight. All right, so you you feel the magic kind of resolve. Uh, Sun, you see blue just kind of collapse for a moment and twitch, and then like force himself up a little bit. Um, what is? What is Tiana's movement speed and um, Bilgy's? Uh, they could sprint. They're all like largely unarmored, but it looks like they're letting them retreat. Yeah, let's just let them go, I guess. I mean, well, I mean, Crocodile no, is raving the entire time about not letting them retreat. <laughs> just like. They're gonna come back, they're gonna regroup, they're gonna attack again, we can't do this, like, we need to know why they're here, we don't even know why they attacked, like, just- They hey, four of them. Hey, shh, shh. It's alright, I'm sure that they were just the people that were hired to, you know, kill our person we're defending. And who hired them? <laughs> like, that caused- that causes her to go into a complete other rant. Okay, okay. I- can I go in and, like, try to grab this body and maybe search it? Yeah, uh- so you're able to go in the water, you pull them all out. Some of them have bits of flesh from the creature kind of stuck to them. Uh, if you want equipment, you can start picking that stuff off the bodies. Um, anything that, anything, I'm looking more for information or gold um, or anything that like looks good enough to sell at a market. All right, so you pat them all down. The first one you sort of lug out of the water is green. You you have a waterlogged note, and it crumbles in your hand, and it's like, ah, fuck. You look through. Looks like these guys were, like, locals probably getting into a fight, or at least, like, on the ship. Like, they, they don't have, like, adventuring gear or anything. They don't even have coin on them. Uh, you do, however, find, like, bullets, green has a flintlock, and some throwing knives. Okay. Um, white isn't in the water. Can I check him for a note? Yeah. You leave the other two to sort of float. The others go in. They get their own kind of collapsed notes. Once you get to white, you see... S you pull out the note, and it just says, SS Bilgewater Noon. Hmm. I keep it anyway. Maybe we could keep the, like, check the handwriting. You look down and you see uh, all of them were wearing stuff that you can salvage. It's sized for you guys. Uh, green was wearing, like, sort of just partial plate. White was wearing full plate and had a shield and a rapier. You look through the other two. Uh, you pick out yellow, who has a spear and full plate. You pick out black, who has... Heavy brigandine, a longsword, and a uh, buckler. All that stuff is like other people's gear, though, so it's more like you could pick it off a body if you wanted, but people generally leave that stuff where it is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to take a body's armor. Yeah. Kroko's yeah. going to grab the spear and just be like, what do you think? It would get me through crowds easier. Good walking stick. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, just watch where you're, uh, watch where you're swinging it. It's just like, oh, like, if we take the pointy bit off, it's just a staff. Do you, do you want me to take the pointy bit off? I mean, it'd help, I think. I had one in the past to... and it was really bad, but this one seems, this one is like, like, just sort of like holds it and it's just like, this is actually straight. 
So, so like, wait. <laughs> um, the guy's still here, right? Like, he's still under the ship. Yeah, uh, he he kind of meekly peeks his way out. Okay, I show him the note, and like, do you recognize this handwriting? I know it's not much, but. He kind of looks at it, and then you see him fixate on something, and he goes, uh, I don't think I need to. You look up, and you see all the guards are returning to their posts. On one of the archer towers that you saw early on in your walk in the morning, Lord Ferdinand kind of is standing there. He squints, and then he backs away slightly. You can see people returning to the area, too, having been let through by the guards. There's some confused-looking workers who kind of just look at the bodies and understand. Bill G and Rooker have gone below decks once people have started to come out again. A few of the guards kind of biting their tongues are ready to pick up Franklin. Okay. Well. Well, I don't know, but these guards that just totally left the area, like right as we were about to be attacked, should we, like, give Franklin to them? Like, I don't think so. Ooh, I don't know. Corrupt politics seems to be Franklin's world. I, uh, I, I'll ask I think Franklin. Like... No, if they're not going to get away with it with the guards, they can get away with retreating. They'd get away with mercs. Guards won't do it. I'm good. Okay. All right, then. Okay. And, uh, he pauses and he passes you an extra gold piece and goes, good work. I mean, hey, it's, it's what we do. Yeah. Okay, well. He pauses I'll and wait. then turns and goes, oh, yeah, um, I'll talk to the Rookery General Office. Uh, I know the guy who is going to hire you. Um, I'll just let him know that you're leaving and that circumstances arose. Okay. Conflict resolution. Uh, say as he makes his way up the boat. He kind of awkwardly steps as you see the gangplank is just about to fall off the boat. The boat's still unmoored. <laughs> yeah, we should probably remoor that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, we're heading out, aren't we? Tiana kind of uh, looks back at the docks and goes, nods, pushes the gangplank sort of back onto the ship from the docks, and then gets into the water, starts clambering up the rope onto the boat. I, you know what? I give her a helping hand, uh, reach down and haul her back up onto the boat. And Bill G. Bill G is also on that. Uh, and then we Bill, both together to help Bill G. Earlier. Yeah, Bill Those two you guys, there. you all start like unfurling the sails, getting them ready, and you catch the wind leaving White Abbey. And a few corpses in your wake. Nice. Uh, we'll come back next week. Hmm? I think before we end, how much would it cost for me to make just, like, a holster that Crow Quill could put on top of the spear so that she doesn't accidentally stab somebody if she doesn't want to? I don't want to actually use the spear. I just wanted a walking stick. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll chop, I'll chop the, I chopped the spear head off for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> all I wanted. No, oh, okay. You just, you go in with the right size of hammer, you bonk the head off, and it's a long, just, haft. So I'm going to oh. write down staff. Is that okay, Will? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and one more thing. How much would it cost? How much would you say the sort of material worth of a mounted gun for the poop deck would be? I see some serious limitations with the apparatus. <laughs> oh. As it happens, I'll say that that's not a discussion for you and me, the GM. That's a discussion for you and Ken and you, because both of you need to work on that machine together. Okay. I I love I love that. Like the my thought is that we start this thing with just the apparatus. We finish this thing with a fully decked out like Okay, um oh, that's gonna be so nice. that's three gold for us. Three uh thirty divided by seven is like four point something. Um so I'm just gonna give everybody four silver and I'm gonna get the extra two silver to I guess, sun to put towards ammunition and stuff. Sure. So right. sun will get six, everybody else gets four. 
So we'll pick it up next week as you guys sail off towards Newtown. If you guys want to watch this, we are at twitch.tv. I almost just said a different Twitch streamers. Thanks, bud. Uh, <laughs> twitch.tv. <laughs> I, you, you hear so many calls to action, and you're just like, it internalizes in your brain. Twitch.tv slash Mr. Croden. Uh, you can check us out at YouTube.com slash Mr. Croden if you want to see these uploaded after the fact. Uh, and if you want to play not exactly the version we're playing, we're playing like the last as I'm trying to make this a functional rulebook version of the rules. The most recent playable version is at bloodwine.fandom.com. Anything coming up? Uh, I'm thinking I might do a stream on Friday. I'm thinking that stream might also be in VR. I'm not Ooh. sure. I still have to make some plans, get things, get some things sorted. But yeah, that's going to be it. And if not, then there's always Fallout New Vegas on Saturday. Yeah, I think we're reaching the end of that DLC. That should be the end of that DLC. I hope it doesn't go for any longer. Than <laughs> like that. genuinely, if we don't reach the end of this DLC. It's not because the DLC is long. It's because we are against pitched fights and we have the Greg Bailey build. Yeah, we have the most <laughs> fragile glass cannon build with all odds stacked against us. Fighting fucking death claws. It's not... Yeah, no. To be fair, we're level 35. It's not that stacked against us anymore. True, but still. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for the stream. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for all your support. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.